meeting is being recorded. Here today with Coach Philip Gibson of your Frost Polar Bears. How are you doing today, Coach? Oh, doing great. Thanks for talking some polar bear football. So uh, let's start with the real hard hitting question here. How cool is it to coach a team with a mascot of the polar bears? Yeah, it's definitely unique. You know, everybody talks about it. You know, I've coached in the same district with the polar bears at, my, at a previous school. So, so it's always talked about community, you know, really uh, embraces that. All right, so um, we're in the spring. You're seeing your kids play in other sports. You're seeing them in the weight room. Um, how's, how's it going so far in the spring? Yeah, it's going really good. We've shown uh, tremendous strides this offseason. You know, our main focus has, has been really getting in that weight room, uh, getting stronger and faster, you know, doing a lot of speed and agility work, uh, change direction, you know, things like that are going to make us a better athlete. All right. So um, kind of walk us through, um, you know, graduation is coming up in a couple of weeks. You're going to be losing some kids. Kind of walk us through who you're losing, who might step into those roles, who's going to be back. Yeah, some guys that are going to be back for us this year, um, kind of just looking ahead, is going to be uh, Mario Porter is going to be one. He's 6'2", 240. He's going to play running back and D end. Um, Cooper Curl is going to be another one. He's 6'1", 185. He's going to play running back and middle linebacker. He's a junior as well. And then um, another key player for us coming back will be our quarterback. He'll be a sophomore this fall, Edwin Alvarado. Um, all those guys are huge contributors for us. Um, you know, two linemen come off the top of my head that will be back. They'll both be – they'll provide our senior leadership this year. We have a small senior class going in this fall. One is – um, Colton Stanford, he'll be a tackle, and then Jaden Rowe will be the other tackle. All the guys that I listed were were all district um, players. A lot of them are both sides of the ball coming back. Um, you know, we're only losing seven seniors, and, um, you know, 70% of our roster this year was actually freshmen and sophomores. So, you know, getting a year older – for us will just help tremendously. And we had a lot of guys, freshmen and sophomores, obviously played a ton of football. And in reality, you know, they probably shouldn't have, you know, as a freshman and sophomore, but that's where we're at in the program. And when I took over, we had a very small roster the previous year, and we've, we've dang near tripled our numbers back in our football program, you know, with the whole COVID thing. And, and a lot of kids got out of the program for w whichever reason. And, just, just us getting the, the kids back in the program this year helped tremendously, and and the kids have really bought in. You know, we've we've done a lot of real good things, and um, and that's not only, not only for football, but we've tripled the numbers in the basketball and also in the track. So getting the kids out for track was huge this spring, and um, I'm really looking forward to the fall. Now, when you're in such a small community, there is for us the the school is such an integral part of the community. What does it mean to the school and the community to get those levels of participation? Yeah, I, you know, I think more than anything, the, the community was looking for a change. And, and uh, you know, me and this coaching staff have, have done a lot, of, a lot of digging this year, you know, trying to lay that foundation and, and uh, you know, doing the things like, you know, for example, this spring we've done, you know, we've done a boot camp. I've got a leadership council involved. Um, you know, players voted on leadership council. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that we have done as a coaching staff to get these kids to buy in and get them and to embrace. And, and ultimately, we want this program to be a player-led program. That's one thing we've been talking about. And, uh, you know, it, it's not easy to do. And it's not going to happen in one day or one week. But you know, with some time um, with these freshmen and sophomores, I mean, you look up and they're going to play a lot of football by the time they're juniors and seniors. And, and when it's when it's time, I mean, we'll be ready to roll and we will be a player led program. Okay, so uh, kind of walk us through your district. Uh, what do you think um, that district is going to look like in the fall and uh, where you might fit into that picture? Yes, sir. We, obviously, we come from a tough district, you know, Mark. 
Marta's a front runner in our district. As, as everyone knows, they made the state championship game last year, as well as numerous years in the past. You know, so they're always going to be the front runner until somebody else proves them wrong. Um, last year, Dawson kind of surprised all, all of us in our district. They wound up going eight and two. Um, they're getting a new new athletic director over there, but they do bring a lot of talent back. Um, you know, Wortham is also in our district, and they have had a lot of recent success. Um, they're graduating, I believe, 14 seniors. So they're losing some senior leadership, but I know they do have some guys coming. And so those three have kind of proven themselves, you know, coming off of last year. And, um, you know, we got a lot to prove this fall. You know, like I said earlier, we have a very, very young team. And that's what I've been talking to the guys about. You know, you can only use that excuse so long, you know, 70 percent freshmen and sophomores. And now it's time to to make our next step um, as a program, take that next step. And, and it's time to show it this fall and and get get frost back in the playoffs and that's you know one of our huge goals that we're going to have is getting back in the playoffs because i think we do have the kids here to get back in it our kids do work hard they're coachable and and they've asked they've done everything i've asked this off season to put us in that position and so i really think we're going to be in the mix we just got to stay healthy and you know we're going to put Few, few new things in offensively, defensively, and, uh, you know, I think the kids are going to buy in and, and we're going to go make it happen. All right. Well, you, you've been around high school athletics for your professional career. Um, so let, let, let's take a big picture look here from the small town perspective, if you will. But uh, what do you see as the biggest challenge facing Texas high school athletics right now? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, I would say regardless of the sport, sport, if you look throughout Texas right now, I mean, you know, there's a lot of different things that pull athletes one way or another. You know, for example, in football, you know, we have these seven-on-seven -seven leagues that are organizations outside of, of what we're affiliated with, and they pull, you know, the top athletes here and there from numerous schools. You know, looking at basketball, we have AAU, you know, and – you know, there's a lot of pros and cons of that, um, you know, and, and then you look into baseball, we have the, you know, the select baseball teams throughout Texas are huge. And, you know, you got the fall ball and, and, uh, you know, just like the basketball, it has a lot of pros and cons along with the seven on seven. And, uh, you know, you know, obviously for me, we try to teach, you know, team unity and, and, uh, you know, one community and stuff like that. And, you know, I would say that's one of the, the bigger things nowadays is, is um, you know, making sure people are doing it for the right reason, because that's for obviously the Texas High School Coaches Association stands for is, you know, is coaching our coaches and coaching our kids doing things the right way, you know. So just making sure our kids are intact with all that and, and making the parents aware of that. Okay, so let's go from real big picture to real small picture now. Try and learn a little bit about Philip Gibson. What would you say your number one guilty pleasure is? <laughs> okay. Um, obviously, I'm a big, a big football guy, as you know. Um, and I'm just a huge football nerd. And, you know, we work seven days a week, as you know, just like, just like most staffs across Texas. But – and my wife gives me a hard time, but on Saturdays when I get off, I'm still a huge football nerd, and I'll, I'll go sit, you know, on the back porch or in the living room and watch football pretty much all day. And, uh, you know, I love, to, I love to cook, you know, on the grill, on the smoker, whatever, and, and get that going. You know, we're uh, – and I love Mexican food. That's, that's probably one, one other thing. So, yes, sir. So it's, it's hard not to be a fan of Tex-Mex being from anywhere. Yes, sir. No doubt. No doubt. All right. Well, Coach, uh, thank you very much for your time today, and uh, best of luck in the upcoming season. Yes, sir. I appreciate you having me on and talking some talking some football, and I look forward to the next time.
LoneStarGridiron.com. Access the complete history of Texas high school football, over 100 years of information, win-loss records, coaching histories, individual stats, records, and more. Lone Star Gridiron, the authority on Texas high school football.